friends in this class we will study the important insights occurring on groundnut and their ipm recommended throughout the country you know groundnut is one important oil seed crop which is consumed in large quantity within the country because of its higher consumption we are importing even today the oil from abroad so there is a major need to increase the production and productivity of uh, oil seeds in particular the production or the productivity of uh, groundnut crop itself groundnut is grown uh, both in uh, karif under rain fed situations and uh, under irrigated uh, situations during uh, summer season so insects continue to harbor in both the situations that is in karif as well as in summer situation also we will try to list down first the important pests occurring on groundnut i have grouped them into defoliators sucking pests and root and pod feeders coming to defoliators large number of economically important insects are there among them the foremost important pest is a leaf miner which is scientifically referred as aproerma modicella which occurs both during karif as well as summer season here the larvae is the damaging stage it mines into the leaflets in the early stage and forms brown patches on the leaf which you can very clearly see here later on the same larvae after second instar it webs the leaves together and then feeds on the chlorophyll content inside resulting in a burnt up appearance from a distance as if you feel the whole plant is burnt so that much appearance it gives because of its nature of damage the next important pest is a tobacco caterpillar spodoptera leptura which is a polyphagous pest which is more common in karif season here the eggs are laid in mass always and immediately after hatching they feed in a gregarious form unitedly by staying in one place this will happen for about 3 to 5 days later on they migrate when they start migrating they cause small holes on the leaf and sometimes the damage is so much only petioles are left so that much will be the intensity thereby the total plant is killed next in the series is br hairy caterpillar spilosoma obliqua belonging to a lepidopterous insect again this is also a polyphagous pest this also lays its egg in a mass particularly the young larvae for first few days they feed by staying on the under surface of the leaf and later on when the grown up larvae they start migrating and cause total depolarization to the plant again only stems are left in some severe incident situations then gram pod borer you all know that helicoverpa armigera which is a polyphagous uh, pest groundnut is also one of the important host the larvae is the damaging stage it feeds on the foliage prefers to feed on the flowers and buds when tender buds are attacked you know we find on the leaf uh, a symmetrical opening whenever it opens then we have another polyphagous pest red hairy caterpillar which is referred as amsecta albistriga again here also the egg laying is in mass what uh, you are seeing here the young larvae feeds on gregariously by staying in one place for about 3 to 5 days later on the grown up larvae starts migrating and particularly the fourth and fifth instar stages are voracious feeders they defoliate the entire crop as if a cattle has been grazed that is the appearance of the incidence of this particular insect they feed on everything leaves flowers and the growing plants on the plant then the second group is the sucking pest in that aphids again a very specific insect aphis crassivora belonging to aphidae they usually suck the sap from the young leaves leaf buds and flowers because of desapping the growth of the plant is affected stunting and distortion is normally seen and these aphids also secrete honeydew on which sooty mold develops which affects the photosynthesis of the plant thereby the growth of the plant in addition to this direct damage these aphids 
also transmit a virus uh, disease known as peanut stripe virus and a groundnut rosette virus. These are the two viruses which are transmitted by aphid. Then we have the thrips complex. We find uh, more than one species, Cirtothrips, Franconella thrips, and Calliothrips. More than one species uh, may coexist in some situations. The typical uh, damage symptoms are yellowish green patches on the upper surface of the leaf with brown necrotic areas. And you know, whenever somebody touches it, it is a silvery sheen and hard surface. And these uh, infestations, they coalesce, the entire whole leaf uh, dries up in the later stage. All these three species transmit uh, the deadly virus disease, peanut uh, bud necrosis. You can see the clear cut uh, symptoms in the early stage, which even extends to the growing tip here, which is totally killed here. And the whole plant uh, by the side of a healthy plant, you can see the entire plant is uh, killed by this uh, particular vector. Then the next important um, sucking pest is uh, leaf hopper, Empovasca, uh, different species are involved. Again here also both nymphs and adults, uh, they inject toxin into the leaf and also the veins. Because of this we find chloratic uh, patches on the leaf tips and it gives an yellow color, very typically you can observe them in the groundnut field resulting in a hopper burn symptom. Then the next group of uh, insects include root and uh, pod feeders. In that white grub is one of the important uh, seasonal pest, usually occurring during karif season. We have two species, Holotrecha consanguinea and Holotrecha serrata. Here the grub is the damaging stage, they mainly feed on the roots and damaged pods also. Even because of uh, damage to roots, the whole plants will be drying and then when pulled they come out easily. Then we have termite, another important pest, odentotermis and microtermis species. This termite is a problem particularly in a rain fed situation whenever there is a failure of rain resulting in uh, wilting of plants because of uh, the workers uh, feeding on the roots. And then uh, they also bore into the pods and damage the seeds in case of severe incidents. Then uh, in isolated areas as a sporadic pest, we find jewel beetles, Spinoptera species, particularly in Tamil Nadu, this is a major problem uh, during Ravi season, that is during November, December season. Here, because of the adults as well as the grubs, both are the damaging stage, they cause the wilting of the plants because of their feeding to the roots and grubs burrow into the stem also, resulting in total death of the whole plant. The infested fields show dead and drying plants. When pulled again, they also come out easily and the stem contains the insect stages. In some situations, we find the severe incidence of wireworms false wiry worms and ear works, particularly during Karif season whenever there is a failure of rain. Coming to the IPM of uh, these important uh, insect pests, a series of uh, technologies have been recommended uh, throughout the country. And uh, first among those is uh, the cultural practices, you now use of uh, particularly the trap crop. Trap crops such as soybean or uh, cowpea for leaf miner. And then castor, spodoptera uh, insect can be used as a broader crop or mixing with the groundnut seed can also be used. Then second cultural practice is growing of uh, tall crops, particularly bajra, sorghum or maize all along the border, mainly to reduce the movement of uh, the thrips because you know thrips in addition to direct damage, they are also vectors, particularly the peanut. Uh, but necrosis virus. Then another important and uh, very simple and economic uh, technology is use of vegetative trapping, uh, particularly for red hairy caterpillar, that is using uh, these uh, jetropa twigs or calotropis twigs, which when placed in the groundnut field, the fourth and fifth star larvae are very much attracted to these uh, trapped plants and they first feed on this 
and large number of larvae are located on this, so they can be mechanically destroyed. Similarly, the neem plant which can be used as a trapping device for adults, you know adults after the first rain they emerge out from the soil and they prefer to feed on the neem leaves. So, this behavioral response can be used in the IPM technology. Then the use of mechanical control. Now, majority of the insects that I listed as defoliators include the polyphagous pests, particularly the Spodoptera, Spilosoma, red hairy caterpillar, they all lay eggs in groups, particularly on the, as I said in the broader leaves and such leaves when searched you get egg masses which can be collected and then destroyed. Not only that, the early instar larvae when they are feeding unitedly for the first 3 to 5 days because of their uh, united feeding we find skeletonization on the leaf such leaves can be identified and then they can be destroyed mechanically even the grown up larvae which can be seen very clearly in the field situation can also be collected and then they can be destroyed another uh, method is uh, putting up of a bird perches about 10 to 12 per acre you know the predaceous birds uh, feed on uh, these uh, grown up larvae also then another technology is uh, use of behavior modifying uh, and also the botanical pesticides and also biological control. You know setting up of pheromone traps almost 10 traps per hectare for Spodoptera or, uh, and also for Helicoverpa, 25 traps for leaf miner or even light trap will help in identifying the peak abundance of uh, the adults of uh, these uh, polyphagous insects. Then secondly spraying up of uh, botanical insecticides, neem seed kernel extract or commercial neem formulations are also available, they can also be used or neem oil at the rate of 5 ml mixed with a detergent neem powder about 1 gram per uh, uh, liter of water. So that uh, better uh, dispersion will be there in water can be very effectively used against defoliators and sucking pests. Then microbial insecticides is also recommended particularly Spodoptera NPV or Helicoverpa NPV both at the dosage of 250 LE per hectare or even commercially available Bacillus thuringiensis insecticide is also available which can also be very effectively used at 1 gram per liter against Spodoptera and Helicoverpa. In high humidity conditions a fungal pathogen is also available commercially. Pneumoria rely can also be very effectively used for Spodoptera management. One of the important component of IPM is use of ETL technology. You know economic threshold level is most important for the effective application of pesticides. Otherwise the cost of application of insecticide will not benefit the applicator. So, at various levels the economic threshold levels have been worked out for different insects. For leaf miner it is 5 mines per plant on 30 days. With age of the crop increase the number of larvae also increases from 5 to 15 mines per plant at 55 days. For Spodoptera and other defoliators it is 20 to 25 percent of the defoliation particularly during 40 days after sowing. Then for leaf hoppers you know 5 to 10 adults per plant after 1 month of uh, sowing. Then for thrips you know 5 adults on the terminal bud becomes the economic threshold level. Then the chemical control is one of the important component. I said lot of insecticides have been listed for defoliators, leaf miners. Similarly for sucking pests also seed treatment with the imidacloprid is found to be highly effective. Then spray formulation is also recommended particularly in endemic areas for white grub management. Seed treatment with chlorofyrifos is one of the best treatment uh, that has been uh, recommended by various organizations across the country. And then central insecticide board has listed various uh, insecticides on uh, groundnut uh, crop use. So these are the list of insecticides against which pest it works. And what is the recommended dosage also everything has been given in this uh, table. There are no varieties particularly released against uh, the uh, various insects uh, in case of groundnut. 
but some of the varieties which are high yielding having some added advantage of tolerance to some of the pests have been recommended. In Kharif also they have listed series of varieties which are released having some sort of resistance the ones which I have indicated with red are showing high degree of resistance for example, Kadri 8 and of late Kadri 9 is also been released. They are highly tolerant to bud necrosis virus disease. Similarly, during Rabi summer also uh, quite a number of varieties have been recommended across the country for using it in the IPM package. So, all these technologies can be very effectively integrated to get a higher yield with maximum net profit to the farmers. Thank you.